Hi everybody, welcome to Castelia Quarry Metro Park. I am Cheryl Kilmer, a naturalist for Erie Metro Parks, and we are going to go on a tour and discover some of the history and the natural resources. So my favorite part is the part where we walk into the quarry floor. It is a gorgeous view, so I cannot wait to show you. Such a gorgeous view, right? So the Castalia Quarry Metro Park didn't always look like this before it was a metro park. It was a active quarry from 1890 to 1965. When it first began, it was called Quarry Number no. 5 with Wagner Quarry Company. And the Wagner Quarry Company or Quarry Number no. 5 harvested limestone. So when the quarry first became an active quarry in 1890, uh, men worked really long days. They worked up to 12 hours a day. They were paid 17 cents an hour and they only swung 30 pound hammers and they carried out the stone by horse and buggy and then new technologies came about and they had new machinery like power drills and the Marion steam shovel. The Wagner Stone Company made use of a very powerful machine called the Marion steam shovel and the Marion steam shovel was used to load stone into train cars inside the quarry. Now the Marion Steam Shovel Company manufactured excavating equipment that was used around the world. The Wagner Stone Company used the Marion Steam Shovel. The Marion Steam Shovel was manufactured in Marion, Ohio, and Marion Steam Shovels were used in the mining, logging, and quarry industries around the world. And more, and for more than a hundred years, Marion Steam Shovel Company supplied engineering tools. And this company was founded in 1884 by Ohioans Henry M. Barnhart, George W. King, and Edward Huber. This photograph was taken in the Wagner Stone Company's quarry. It shows the Marion steam shovel, which is on the right. 
it shows it's loading stone into cars. Now you'll see a little locomotive on the left that is called the Lima locomotive number 2198. The locomotive was shipped to Castilla and the engine had wheels 22 inches in diameter and ran on a narrow gauge which was only 36 inch tracks and the weight of the little engine was 23,300 pounds which is about 11 tons it also burned coal it burned 1,500 pounds of coal and it carried 400 gallons of water now the locomotive number 29 2198 was scrapped on May 20th, 1921. So here's a photograph of the Marion steam shovel doing its job. Its job was to load a large amount of stone into these little train cars called dinkies. Now you can see the little locomotive that I talked about earlier. Uh, that was a locomotive that pulled these little carts um, from the quarry out of Castellia Quarry. You can see how large this steam shovel was. There are nine men photographed in this picture. So I'll see if you can find them all. So when the men needed smaller rock, the men would crush it in the stone crusher, which is uh, pictured here. And a part of the stone crusher is still in the quarry. Until the mid 1940s, the rock was loosened with handheld pneumatic drills like this one pictured here at the Castellia Quarry of the Wagner Stone Company. So stone that was harvested in the quarry was used to build the Ohio Turnpike. It was used to build the Edison Bay Bridge that connects from Bayview to, to Marblehead that goes over the uh, Sandusky Bay. And this limestone was used for um, the Lake Erie uh, riprap to control erosion. The quarry closed completely in the next because they pretty much harvested all of the good quality limestone. So I want you to focus on the cliff right up there. And do you notice that the cliff are two different colors? So the darker rock is a rock called dolomite. And that is a lower quality rock. It's very hard. So once the men got to that point, they stopped production because it wasn't worth the time or the money or the energy to harvest that limestone. So in 1987, Wagner Quarries donated this land to Erie Metro Parks. And since then, this landscape has changed. We put conservation efforts into this park and I'm going to show you what we have done to conserve this land for plants and animals. So we are looking at the quarry floor of Castilla Quarry Metro Park and the quarry is all made out of limestone and there are plants that are limestone loving. So there are actually plants on the quarry floor that thrive. So 
so limestone loving plants that grow on the quarry floor are flowers like chicory and Canada's summer bluets, which is, I don't know if you can see it that much on the phone, but the quarry floor right now is covered in Canada's summer bluets. And it's just, just a blanket of white flowers. This is the Canada Summer Bluet that I talked about that is limestone loving. It's a white flower with four petals. And I'm gonna zoom out here. And you can see that this is their blooming period right now. So they're doing very, very well on the quarry floor. At the quarry, you will see turkey vultures. soaring. So there are one, two, three turkey vultures here. Turkey vultures are mistaken for for bald eagles a lot uh, because of their size and because of their color. But you can tell the difference between a turkey vulture and a bald eagle by how they fly and how they hold their wings. Turkey vultures hold their wings in a V shape. So kind of think about turkey vulture, V for vulture. Eagles, when they fly, they hold their wings very, very straight. And you want to look for their white head and tail. That's key for bald eagles. So this is a very small cottonwood tree. Do you guys want to take any guesses how old this tree is? This tree is about 30 years old. Now we would think it would be a younger tree because of its size, but it can't really grow that tall on the quarry floor because of the soil. The soil is very hard, so it can't really tap its roots into the soil. So instead of growing into the soil and growing up, the tree, the tree's roots is growing out. So it's spreading out so it can gather all the water and all the nutrients for it to survive on the quarry floor. Now look on this side. The trees that are tallest, those are the same species. That is, a, those are cottonwood trees as well. But they are not growing on the quarry floor they are on the other side of the quarry and when you think of it when fall arrives the leaves fall they decompose and make a really rich soil so when the trees reproduce um, they soak in that nutrient rich soil allowing the trees to grow much taller and more full kind of soaring in the sky here they are doing a behavior called kettling so this is a perfect area where heat rises which is called a thermal and once those thermals arise those thermals will get caught underneath the the turkey vultures wings and they will ride that thermal without flapping one wing and that is when they go in circles and they get higher and higher and higher and then they'll kind of soar away so it's a very energy saving behavior for them so way up there is a red-shouldered hawk there's one right there and another one right there 
So they're using the thermals as well. Notice they don't flap their wings one time. So not only turkey vultures will use the thermals at the quarry, but hawks will as well, just like this red-shouldered hawk here. So right behind me here is the stone crusher that we have discussed. It is the only piece that is left here on the quarry because it is a big hunk of metal, way too heavy for us to take it out and haul it away, so here it stays. The stone crusher was used to crush the limestone into smaller pieces, um, less than three inches, almost a powder substance, and it was used for many things. It's used for, for toothpaste, for cement, for even farmers will use it for their chickens. So next we are going to walk on the upper shelf of the quarry and discover fossils. Let's go! Check out this view. We're pretty high up. About 380 million years ago, Ohio was covered in a warm saltwater sea. And we know this because we have fossils that prove it. So fossils are formed when a living organism is buried super, super quick. So an event will bury the organism, the organism dies and becomes fossilized. So it pretty much turns into stone. So the fossil can be a, a mold, which means um, just kind of picture your hand and you take your hand and you put it in, you kind of press it into to clay. You take your hand out and that outline is a mold and a cast is another type of fossil which means it's an exact replica of that organism. Limestone is made out of crushed shells from past living organisms. So that is how we have our limestone all over this quarry and that's why we have fossils. Now we have certain fossils like horn corals, we have gastropods, which is our snails, we have clam shells, and I'm going to show you some of the boulders that have these fossils in it. So we are high up. I'm not too fond of heights. But this is a very cool part of the quarry, so I'm going to carefully walk over here and we're going to look for some fossils. Here is our first boulder. Right, so can we find some limestone here, some fossils. We have a horn coral here, some more coral. This one looks like a shell, so gastropod. We have some more sea creatures here and right here. So these will be the cast fossils that we're looking at. And there's a real big one right here. This is a very good one. Let's kind of go around. Can you guys spot any other ones?
very cool. When you're on the upper shelf of the quarry, you will see a couple lakes. One is down here. One is way down there. The other one is right here. Now these, these lakes are here all year round. They are ground fed, so it's fed by a spring. So these lakes do not dry up. We have a lot of good pond life here too. We get uh, red-winged blackbirds, we get dragonflies and turtles, and I've seen a goose family here. So we'll see what all we what all we can find here. There's cattails. It's a pretty quiet day today, but it really does come to life. Oh, over here, I see a very common bird. I see a very common bird that we will see in the quarry. Oh, there's another one. That is a killdeer. And killdeer build their nests on the ground. And they are very, very protective parents. Um, so if they see any type of predator coming, they will fly away to lure, <clears throat> to lure the, to make the predator follow them. Another thing that they will do is, if you get too close, they will kind of run away from the nest to kind of make you follow it and they will pretend to have a broken wing and once the predator gets too close it will fly away next stop the observation deck I want you to focus on this tree right here and this is called a hackberry tree and hackberry trees are one of the trees you can identify by its bark. Now it looks very rough. It kind of looks like um, the whole trunk was covered in clay. You took your hand and you smushed the clay in between your fingers and you let go. Hackberry trees are a host plant for the Hackberry Emperor butterfly. They spend the entire life cycle on that hackberry tree. Now, sometimes in the summertime, you'll see adult butterflies and you'll be walking and when you're walking in the summer, you sweat. And sometimes you'll get a Hackberry Emperor butterfly land on your arm because your sweat consists of different minerals like salt and they like to sip it up. Take a look at this view. So over there is the crusher where we were. Walked all the way, all the way around. Then there is the shelf where the fossils were. Beautiful, beautiful trail. the view from the observation deck and this is a pretty clear day and I hope 
that shows up on camera because today you can see Perry's Monument. Most days you cannot because it's either hazy, foggy, uh, too cloudy, but today's very good. So over there is past the bay. That's Port Clinton area. Then you're gonna look past over here. That's Lake Erie. Then right there is Perry's Monument. There are over 500 different species of plants and animals that are recorded at the Castelia Quarry Metro Park. So since um, since the parks took over, um, wildlife has just just boomed here. So a lot of trees grew, a lot of vegetation grew, which created wonderful habitat. And so once the habitat was established, uh, animals started moving in. And so it just created an entire ecosystem here, which is very, very awesome. And it's a part of our mission to conserve and protect. So we definitely met our mission with Castelli Quarry Metro Park. I just came from the observation deck, which is just a little way a um, little ways up there, up the hill, and I, as you walk down, you'll notice <clears throat> the difference of temperature. Now this is kind of like a natural air conditioning, because in there are big boulders or rocks that trap cool air, and air is circulating over here. So this is a nice cool spot to cool off and take a little break. So I'm standing here at one of the most awesome features at Castelli Quarry Metro Park. We have glacial grooves and glacial grooves are remnants of the last ice age. So when Ohio was practically under ice, the pressure and force of the glaciers receding and moving carved out a lot of the landscape. So this is the glacial groove. And how do we know this is a glacial groove? Well, you wanna look at the whole rock formation. You see, well, let me walk up here. Do you see these striations right here? They're going in a perfect line. They're going in one direction. So that was a part of the glacier moving in one direction. And this groove is thought to be um, the same, is carved from the same glacier as the Kelly's Island glacial grooves. This is the last stop of the tour. Uh, this is the leftover limestone um, from the, the quarry and it makes little, looks like little sand dunes um, or mounds. So it's kind of fun to explore around here. There's different wildflowers. So you can see wildflowers and butterflies. So it's super neat to explore over here. I hope you learned a little bit about the awesome history of the Castelia Quarry Metro Park and I hope it inspires you to come visit and walk the tour yourself and if you have any questions feel free to email me uh, my name is Cheryl Kilmer and my email is ckilmer at eriemetroparks.org have a good one bye bye